Here's some help with the experiment 10 post lab. Question one says student A weighs 0 0.421 grams of KHP, that's potassium hydrogen phthalate, on a laboratory balance. The KHP was titrated with an unknown NaOH solution, and the concentration of the NaOH, or sodium hydroxide, was determined to be 0 0.491 molar. Student B diluted 3 molar HCl from the reagent shelf using a volumetric flask to obtain 0 0.6 molar HCl. This solution was titrated with the same unknown NaOH solution and found to be 0 0.591 molar. Which student should have the more accurate concentration for the unknown sodium hydroxide and why? Okay, and so here there's a lot of words, a lot of numbers, but really what's important is the significant figures in the numbers. So you have two students. Student A is using a balance, and student B is using a volumetric flask, and then when he does the titration, the burette. And so what you want to look at is how many significant figures are used by each student, and what that implies for the accuracy uh, that each student would determine NaOH, the concentration of NaOH with. Question two says the volume of water added moving a half drop of titrant from the tip of the burette to the analyte solution during the end of the titration may be ignored in your calculations. Why is this so? So if some of you added a half drop, you might remember that when you touch the half drop at the end of the burette to the inside of the Erlenmeyer flask, it doesn't always roll down, and so one of the ways that you can get it to roll down into the solution is to squirt some deionized water onto the side, and the deionized water will carry the half drop down into your solution. So why can you do that? Why doesn't that mess up your concentration? Because in the titration, all that matters is the amount of H plus in one solution and the amount of, and the amount of OH minus in the other solution. When you add water, you're not adding either of those. Water is neutral. And so water isn't going to disturb the balance between acid and base that a titration is all about. Question three says vinegar is an aqueous solution of acetic acid. By law, it must contain four grams of acetic acid. And there it is, CH3COOH. And that's 60.05 grams per mole for every 100 milliliters of solution, although it is commonly up to 8% acetic acid. If a 16.00 milliliter aliquot, that's just a sample, of vinegar required 1.69 milliliters of 0 0.260 molar sodium hydroxide to reach the end point, is the sample legally vinegar? Show your calculations to support your answer. Okay, so first, the, the question is, we have a sample, is it legally vinegar? And by legally vinegar, what they mean is that it has 4 grams of acetic acid for every 100 milliliters of solution. So we need to figure out how many grams of acetic acid we have, how many milliliters of solution we have, and how that compares, whether it's bigger or smaller, to 4 grams for every 100 milliliters of solution. So let's go through the problem, look at the other numbers they give us, see if we can figure out these two. Grams of acetic acid, milliliters of vinegar solution. The first number we run into, 16 milliliters, uh, milliliter aliquot of vinegar, that's the milliliters of the vinegar solution. So that's 16 in the denominator right there. Now we just need to figure out the grams. So they give us 1.69 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. They give us that that solution is 0 0.26 molar NaOH. And remember that molarity is moles per liter. So that's really 0 0.26 moles of NaOH in every one liter. They also give us acetic acid. They give us the uh, molecular formula for acetic acid. And acetic acid is monoprotic. It might look a little strange. You can see the other that there are other H's in here. Remember that product is referring to how many H's you have. Because a hydrogen is really just a proton with an electron going around it. If you take the electron away, a hydrogen ion, H+, plus, is just a proton. So the protic in monoprotic is referring to the proton. An acid is monoprotic if it only gives away one hydrogen. So here, acetic acid is only going to give away one hydrogen. And what that means is that you'll, for every one mole of acetic acid you have, you'll only need one mole 
as NaOH. So that's a relation that we found just looking at the molecular formula. And then they also give us the molecular mass of acetic acid. We know that one mole of acetic acid is going to equal 60.05 grams of acetic acid. Okay, well, we can take the 1.69 milliliters of sodium hydroxide and convert it to liters. That'll connect it to the molarity. So every time you do a conversion, you write a multiplication sign, a fraction bar, and the units you have on top go on the bottom so that they'll cancel out. I know that for every 1,000 milliliters, you have one liter. Milliliters will cancel, and now I have liters of sodium hydroxide. So I need to convert this again, because I ultimately I want a gr grams of acetic acid. Every time you do a conversion, you do a multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on top go on the bottom so they cancel out. And here I'm going to use the molarity as the conversion factor. So next to liters is going to go 1. Going over the fraction bar on top, I'll have 0 0.26 moles of sodium hydroxide. Liters of NaOH are going to cancel. I'm going to have to do another conversion factor, so multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on the top go on the bottom, so they cancel out. And here, I'm going to use my third conversion factor. So I know for every one mole of NaOH, I have one mole of acetic acid because it's monoprotic. Moles of NaOH will cancel. Now I have moles of acetic acid, and I can get grams by writing a multiplication sign, fraction bar, units on the top go on the bottom so that they'll cancel out. And using my last conversion factor, next to moles will go one, and going crossing over the fraction bar is like going across the equal sign, so on top I'll have 60.05 grams of acetic acid. Moles of acetic acid will cancel out, and I'll be left with the grams of acetic acid that I want. Now, if you plug all this into a calculator, it'd be 1.69 divided by 1,000, enter, times 0.26, enter, times 60.05, enter. You should get 0.026 grams of acetic acid. And so, we know that we have, if you divide those, that you'll have 0.001625 grams of acetic acid for every one milliliter. Multiply that by 100, and that means that you'll have 0.1625 grams for every 100 milliliters. That's less than the four grams that you need for it to be legal. And so this factory that produced this vinegar uh, has been illegally using too little acetic acid and basically just selling people water.